finals of junkyard wars. Need something, need something big. Eggs in space. Needs work. junkyard doggies well it's finally arrived the most important moment in the history of our junkyard the grand finale now we've had teams battling it out through thick and thin playing it fair and square most of the time anyway and after four heats and two semifinals we're gonna gather the two surviving teams for a, a desperado western style shootout now the winner of this competition is gonna receive this covetedly heavy junkyard wars trophy the final mission is to launch a freshly laid ostrich egg in the nose of a rocket and fire it skyward as high as it'll go. The team whose rocket gets the highest and whose egg makes it safely back to Earth will be this year's Junkyard Wars winners. It's going to be eggs over easy. So let's meet our finalists. In Turquoise, we welcome back Californian constructors, the Art Attacks. That's Ken Beetleman, June Moxon, and Captain Dwayne Flatmo. Back home, they're the Kinetic Sculpture Kings. Let's get ready to rumble. In round one, they sailed to victory in Red Hot Hazel, the most eye-catching boat on the seven seas. And in the semifinals, the Kinetic Kids fed the opposition to the Sharks after they pumped their people-powered dive machine so efficiently, they surfaced with the treasure. <laughs> to get the art attack skywards, we've got the rebel of rockets, James Tucci. James's first flight was at school when he launched a fellow pupil across the gym in a rocket-powered wagon. Since then, he's been reveling in rockets and reached altitudes of over 10,000 feet. Let's hope his head isn't still in the clouds. <laughs> and in the green overalls, once again are the mighty Brothers Long, true sons of the soil. These clean living farm boys from Pennsylvania have plowed all their rivals into the ground. No team can be stronger than a family team. And we've built a lot of crazy machines in the past. So Junkyard Wars, whatever you want to throw at us, we're ready. Bring it on. In round one, their off-road buggy made a big splash. <laughs> and in the semifinals, they found themselves floating on air and styrofoam. The other team just took a dive. For the Brothers Long, we found the Kung Fu master of space, Bruce Lee. Bruce's last rocket was over 30 foot high and weighed 600 pounds. It blew up on the launch pad, but he's trying to keep that quiet. So it's time for the Titans to hear their final challenge. Okay, teams, art attacks. Yeah. 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 Long brothers, brothers long. Brothers. Yeah. Congratulations, you all made it to the finals. You know, speaking of finals, space, the final frontier. You know, we decided that for the championship of Junkyard Wars, we wanted the teams to have a blast. Which is why your mission is to build us a rocket. <laughs> you must take this freakishly large Junkyard Wars egg, put it in the nose cone of the rocket that you build, and the winning team will be the one that fires this the highest into space and gets their egg back in one piece. Okay, teams, you know the rest of the deal. You have just 10 hours to build your contraptions. And the time starts from when the ball hits the bottom of the junkyard time machine. Wait for it. Easy. Scramble! the ball! The race is on, and the teams rush to their own separate workshops to plan their strategy. Hey, you know, George, this is a really exciting challenge, isn't it? I don't know, I'm just worried that it's not gonna be all that it's cracked up to be. <laughs> a rocket. A rocket. <laughs> to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we're going to do something that's really uh, pretty simple. It comes down very low drag. This is the winning design for lofting eggs. So this is what we're going to use. The Long Brothers are going for a traditional cigar-shaped rocket with a nose cone at the top, a long body, and three fins at the bottom for stability. 
Between these fins, they plan to mount three identical rocket motors. The egg will be safely stashed in a secure compartment just beneath the nose cone, along with its parachute. If all goes according to plan, at maximum height the nose cone will pop off, the parachute will open and the egg will float safely down to Earth. All right, so the first thing is a rocket motor. Rocket motors. That's right. what we need. Three rocket okay. motors. Or as many as we can get. Six? As many as we can get? Three. Now, how do you plan on taking us to the stars? Over the wall, the art attacks are going for the outrageous. We could do, be a traditionalist, or we could simplify this whole construction down to a single cone. The art attacks design is based around one huge rocket motor. They'll position it in the center of a simple cone-shaped rocket and stow the egg in its own cone on top. As with the Long Brothers rocket, an explosive charge will cause the nose cone to separate when the rocket has reached maximum height and the precious cargo will float to Earth. Find the motor tube, find the aluminum sheeting, get, the plywood, the, get the plywood pieces. If you see any parachute nylon, grab it. And if we get all of it, then we can sell it back to them. Yeah. This is the finals, guys. Okay. We got this far. I don't want to go home second place. Nobody remembers second place. Right. Let's do it, guys. All right, let's build a rocket. <laughs> With just 10 hours to go before their final machines are finished, the race for space is started. Good luck, guys. Go. Find those engines. Well, it seems like both of our teams have decided what they want to build, but what they really both need are some of these rocket engines. These rocket engines, or motors, are really glorified fireworks. High explosives are exceedingly dangerous and not something you'd normally find in a junkyard. So we've been forced to plant a number of these motors, but we've hidden them very well. Will the teams find them? Why don't you come on back and see for yourself. Welcome back to the Junkyard Wars Finals, where our two teams are on a mission to build rockets to launch an egg into space. In glorious green, the Long Brothers, the farm boys from Pennsylvania, are going for the conventional, a missile-shaped rocket with three engines. That's if they can find them. Hey, I think I might have found an engine out here. Let me check it out. Good, we need three of them, though. Keep looking. In terrific turquoise, the Art Attacks, kinetic constructors from California, are going for the controversial, a cunning cone-shaped rocket. That thing, I'm, I'm just doing, how, how heavy is this? They only need to find one engine, but it's got to be a big one. Hey, Ken, look what I found! <laughs> is it a big one? No, darn it! <laughs> but it is one! <laughs> oh, but Greg has found a big one. Hey, guys, I found a motor here. I'm going to go ahead and bring it in. All right. I brought you a little Hello. gift. My egg. <laughs> Your kingdom for an egg. There it is. is it. That's it. Treat it very carefully. That's very what nice. an ostrich egg feels like. Ah. You'll be the expert today. Whoa, that's got some weight to it. I know. That's, that's a real ostrich egg painted. That's a big one, isn't it? I saw a rocket motor coming. Yeah, You've hidden it, haven't our, you? Uh, these ah. are our engines here. Yeah, we were protecting these. I'm not surprised. <laughs> They're all called by different letters. Is that right? Right. Each letter is double the power of the letter before it. So this is a K, that's an I, so we get I, J, K. So right. this one is four times the power of that. These motors or engines contain a heady concoction of ammonium perchlorate and aluminum powder, similar to what's used in the Space Shuttle side boosters. They're ignited by a spark via an electrical connection to a battery. The exhaust gases from the burning propellant accelerate out through the bottom of the engine, providing the thrust to send the rocket skywards. Using three engines together means the Long Brothers will get three times the thrust. And they also have a secret weapon. Do you have pantyhose, by the way? <laughs> I think that's a personal <laughs> question. <laughs> hey! According to Bruce, they say an egg loft, and we can build this chamber, and you suspend the egg and nylon pantyhose. You're having me it's on. It's the best. So the egg actually sits inside the tights, as we call yes. them. And the egg just bounces around. Is this what all good rocket enthusiasts know, or is this a secret oh, weapon? This is, this is a pretty new secret I found just before I came here. Really? Yeah. And how high do you think it's going to go? 2,500 feet. 
Really? We want to go all the way to the top. <laughs> <laughs> well, show me what you've got going here. Show me what you guys have decided to do. Well, we're basically, we're not going to do the traditional rocket, which is a very pointed, long thing. You're going to do just a big, one big, huge cone? Yeah. Exactly. It simplifies all of the stability calculations. You hit a badminton birdie, it goes straight. It's the fins that give stability to conventional missile-shaped rockets like the Longs. Calculating the exact size and shape of these fins is difficult maths, and any mistake could cause the rocket to change direction and shoot towards Earth. The Earth's tax giant cone is inherently stable thanks to its shape, but because of its large cross-sectional area, it'll be more susceptible to wind drag. A large, powerful motor should help them cope with this problem. Are you actually a rocket scientist? Uh, I used to, used to do this kind of thing, uh, but mainly oh, in the terms of um, uh, uh, interplanetary satellites. Wow. In other words, I worked on Galileo that's orbiting, uh, that's orbiting Jupiter Did right you now. really? Yeah. Did you, were you the one that built the antenna for that? No, I didn't build the antenna. I was the guy who built the uh, star tracker for it. And that worked. Oh, uh, it worked so great. We got good. there. Wow. All right. Yeah. Here's All some right. more stuff. Here's some plastic. Oh, cool. Another some rocket more. motor. Got another yeah. motor. That's what we want. Ooh. Guys, I think we found our payload. See, this is way bigger than we need. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one, lift off. It's the finals. What now? How are uh, the brothers Long brothers? Uh, you long. <laughs> you could go on front with that. I never you? figure it out. So <laughs> just kind of ramble. Brothers Long brothers Long. It's kind of, it's quite out, well, uh, to me it's outlandish. They want their egg suspended in pantyhose. Because apparently this is the optimal thing for keeping the egg nice and secure, sort of wobbling around in the air. This is a bunch of lonely men at war. <laughs> That's what this is. They're trying to bring filth into it. They were. They were kind of getting on my trousers and everything. Really? <laughs> well, how, how, how high have they said that they were? They've said very confidently two and a half thousand feet. 2,500 yep. uh, feet? Yep. Funny enough, Flat Mo and the gang over at Art Attacks, they figure that they're good for 2,500 feet. Really? Too, oh. Which means that maybe it's a close race. It's still a close race out in the junkyard. Uh, I'm crazy. Finding rocket motors isn't easy, and June may have disturbed the residents. I think I found where the big rat lives. All right. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not the big motor they're looking for. I want to use this motor, it's bigger. On the other side, Brian is getting frustrated. I want to use this one. <laughs> For him, size matters. Look, I'm not a rocket scientist, but this is bigger than this. That's right. We get three of these. There we go, more We're going with this one. Bigger, better. So we're going to have to change the design here. They are apparently all gathered and the other team what? has the big one. Okay, so can we barter something? Do they need something we have that they might need or something? Well, I heard someone say earlier that they needed some pantyhose. Okay, well, you put on some lipstick and go over it. <laughs> nice, red. <laughs> Secret weapon, man. This is nuclear science, man. <laughs> hello, boys. <laughs> what y'all doing? <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Whoa. So I just thought, you know, that maybe <laughs> I heard some rumors that you guys were short a motor. Well, we could something? use two more. Yeah. Two more? Two more, yeah. <laughs> But we well, got a real big one here, though. Well, we were thinking that maybe we could use a larger motor. This this looks like a pretty good motor to me. But we could go three. <laughs> what do you think, guys? More motors, or we need more than just that motor, though. How about a pair of pantyhose? <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. There you go. And here you go. Whoa. Whoa. Excellent. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I got our pantyhose up. <laughs> now both teams have their engines so they can rev up their rockets. <laughs> Men and rockets have always been a dangerous combination. In the early days in Germany, they experimented with a whole range of outlandish devices, personal jetpacks, planes, even poor little kitties on trains. And the saga continues. Ty Michelson has attached rockets to everything from wheelchairs to snowmobiles. But it takes special dedication to launch your own son at 52 miles per hour on roller skates. 
Mr. Rocket Man himself, therefore, has to be the judge for the Junkyard Wars Fantastic Final. How you doing there? How are you, my friend? This looks like the king's chair here, huh? Oh, this is grace up here. <laughs> it's a great day today, huh? Welcome to the throne. So, what do you think of our teams? Okay, the, the green team, the Long Brothers, um, I'm a little bit concerned about the three motors, and they have to light at right. the same time. Because if they don't light at the same time, that rocket's gonna go sideways. And if one of them lights, it's gonna become, it, who knows, it may not even be stable enough to even make it fly. Now, how, let's talk about Art Attack setup. Uh, they're, they're running single engine. Right. So they're running one bigger engine. Right. It's a great design, but uh, the aluminum that they're wrapping around, I'm a little bit concerned because uh, that, you know the heat is over 3,000 degrees and uh, the flame and the heat is gonna be sucked up underneath there. So I am concerned that if they do burn a hole through the aluminum style, uh, you know, it could, same thing, it could take a right. Okay, who would you choose, Art Attacks or a Long Brothers setup? Art Attacks. Boy, you didn't even bat an eye, did you? Well, see, you know, three motors, you gotta get them to light, and right. you gotta get them to light now. The Long Brothers' telepathic family machine is firing on all cylinders. Greg's on fins, Brian's on parachute, but they're still short of a nose cone. So what we want is a bullet shape, which they call Ogive. Okay. So more of a bullet shape, so it's, it's tapered, but it comes more to a point at the end. Time for Terry to sculpt that styrofoam. All right, love muffins, you got six hours left to build them. Six, hurry up! Come on! I mean, we got ours done. It's standing there. To speed up their styrofoam cone carving, long masters of ingenuity Greg and Terry have improvised a primitive lathe out of nothing more than an electric drill and a sharp knife. I want to sing Christmas carols. <laughs> Here, you want some more? Want a cup of hot cocoa now? <laughs> oh, <All> right. <laughs> Uh, I have a gift for you. All right. Ooh, I have a gift. Like, yes. Oh, oh, come yeah. over. It's present time. It's Christmas. He brought us a present. <laughs> a little something so you can prove that your rocket is the best. This is an altimeter. <laughs> Who would like it? Should I give it to the expert? Yeah. It's just what you wanted. Oh, <laughs> that's the best Christmas present ever, Santa. <laughs> Not only will the altimeter measure the maximum height of the rocket, it's also crucial for the egg's survival. It's the altimeter that will activate a small ejection charge at the precise moment the rocket is at its highest. This explosion will blow off the nose cone, releasing the parachute, which hopefully will bring that big old egg drifting safely back to Earth. Why don't you show me what you got so far? We've got the... Uh fins in the main portion of the rocket tube here. So that's how tall it's going to be? Uh, it'll be a little bit taller because we'll have the uh, fire extinguisher on the top of it. Yeah. Sure. Woo! Amazing. Now, are you going to wrap sheet metal around uh, these legs? Well, maybe just some uh, some plastic or something just to give it a little more aerodynamics. Really? Duct tape. Metal would be too heavy. We want to keep it light. More junk wars have been won and lost by duct tape <laughs> than you'll ever know. The art attacks are carefully stuffing their giant egg cup. Foam rubber and styrofoam will coddle their egg. And then your other styrofoam goes on top, and then this whole bit is going to be, it's okay, I've got it safe, right. is going to be the top of the rocket. Yes. Yeah. So this whole bit is going to blow the, off and come and down. And come down on its own chute. Right. Just before we finish on that, the, with the parachute you mentioned, have you got your parachute -y bit? Yeah, haven't got that yet. Oh. <laughs> Good, We're waiting okay. for Mary Maybe Poppins to show up and give us an umbrella. <laughs> you really you haven't got any material that might do yet. Oh, we'll get it. Yeah. Out in the junkyard, Brian is moving up in the world. Make sure when he throws it, unrolls itself. But he does have a parachute, unlike his artistic adversaries. Well, yeah, I know. We need to find one. Straight up if you can. Uh, not high enough. <laughs> One smashed egg. <laughs> eggs in space or eggs on face? Join us after the break. Howdy gang, welcome back to the Junkyard Wars Finals. Well, we got two teams who are reaching for the stars, but it's going to be a nail biter because time is running out. The challenge is to send an ostrich egg into space. The Long Brothers will need their parachute to open if they're going to bring it down safely. Yeah, that works. All right. The Art Attacks still haven't found their parachute material. So, June's getting high. I am terrified of heights. <laughs> this is really a scary place. Something like this? A sling? Now what are you talking about? And then to the parachute. Oh, that's what you're gonna do, okay. Yeah. 
Oh my God, this is perfect. <laughs> we have a parachute material <laughs> finally. Yay. <laughs> and we're gonna now start seeing our motor mount is gonna be starting to come together. We'll start mounting the, the cone on the top putting in our frames for our cone sheeting and then putting the sheeting on, you'll start seeing a rocket very you soon. You are a madman! <laughs> awesome. This almost now. sounds like rocket science, huh? <laughs> this egg is so big, I don't know. Maybe the pantyhose isn't gonna be a good deal, but we'll find out. Bruce is getting concerned that his precious yes. pantyhose is not gonna be strong enough to support their egg. It's so big. Hold up, pull it back up <clears throat> and double it up. You know me giving up a big engine for this, we better use it. Brian, however, is determined to make it work. Okay. He's experienced in these sort of things. And pulled it over and make it double. See what I mean? Attention golfers! Four! You got four hours left! Make it happen! Come on, you can do it! Go, 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 go! <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Flatmo is ready to try his aluminium nose cone for size, but there seems to have been a breakdown in communication. You go out to the point, it's 24. Oh, from here to here it should be 24, 24. so this would be four foot circle. A right. four foot circle, 24 inch radius. Yeah. Okay, that's You mean not... you've been watching me do that? Yeah, I, no. like an idiot, I'm yeah, sorry. It's okay. It's 24 <laughs> inch radius. These are just our hats we're gonna wear. See, these are... There you go. See? In case it falls on us, see, then we got these little domes here like this. We got enough yeah. room there, you can okay. slide it in. The Long Brothers are over their pantyhose crisis and now have something which is looking vaguely rocketish. Yeah, this is the, yeah. That looks pretty flimsy. They've got uh, four pieces of aluminum kind of flopping in, uh, in the air right now, so I'm not sure how they're going to deal with that. But it looks like if they fire all those engines, it's just going to go like an accordion. Just... Uh, I have an old saying, it's going to fall apart like a $2 suitcase. How about Art Attacks? What do you see uh, happening? Well, you know, there? They're, they're getting a little hardware here and a little hardware there. And, uh, you know, they're... Here's they some really, hardware there. Yeah, hardware. you know, they really haven't made too much movement. You're in Vegas. You got the gambling chips. Who are you putting the money well, on? Well, I'm still looking at Art Attack. But I got to tell you what, I'm kind of like a mug womp. You know, mug on one side, you womp on the other. So I got to, you know, as we progress in this deal, I see we're coming along. I still have the rights to change my mind. It seems that nothing can keep the longs from styrofoam sculpture. What Terry's turning right now on our homemade lathe is to fill inside of this. Right. So he's making the cone to, to, to actually hold exactly this fit. structure. Yeah. Oh, excellent. So this will be completely packed filled in. with styrofoam. Yeah. Then it'd be really hard for it to buckle. Yeah. And that's all we want it to do. Now you've got your motors already loaded. Yeah. This is a primed machine. It's a primed machine. <laughs> but Which, don't smoke. Because <laughs> <laughs> this is quite a gamble, isn't it? Going for three motors rather than just one. Yes, it is. And what I'm interested in is how are you going to make sure that you set them all off at exactly the same split second? In fact, I'll ask Brian. Let's see what Brian's got to say. Well, I've actually questioned it <laughs> when we original, on the original You're design. We said, it's like, how are we going to do this? But. Bruce seems confident, so I'm confident. I, I, very rarely do I ever have one that doesn't go. So Notice how he said very rarely. How many have you had <laughs> fail? Have I had a fail? Uh, I had one a couple of years ago, but it didn't cause any problem. So you've been reassured by him? Yep, have. Explain What's... it again, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> Over on the other side, June and James are tailoring their parachute. Run! <laughs> oh, yeah! Oh. Parachute? Parachuta! Woohoo! <laughs> Perfect! <laughs> yes. June's lucky horseshoe should help the art attacks stride to the stars. This is now our motor mount. Which is. And this is. The, that's the motor? That's the this motor. The motor. That that's our this motor mount. There'd be a hole, there'd be a hole so that. This goes here. Okay. This goes here. Whoop! There we go. I haven't bolted all the pieces. It's like together. a bad 70s lamp. That's yeah. it. And oh, then yeah. the sheeting goes over this and makes the cone. It's an important moment for the Brothers Long. They've put their rocket together, but they know the height it'll reach will depend on its weight. We're in great shape. I think the altitude for 18 pounds is going to be about 2,200 feet. 2,200 feet. About 2,200 feet. Is that a winner? That's a winner. Compared to the other engine? That's a, that's a winner. This assumes you get all three engines to light at the same time. All three engines. They'll light. All right. They'll light. <laughs> I think these can go more wrong than some oh. big old Horkin V8 engine, you know, strapped to a rail. I kind of agree, because a rocket it is a bit all or nothing, isn't it? And we want all, and we don't want nothing. <laughs> <laughs>
One rocket coming up. <laughs> One rocket coming up. As the Art Attacks rocket takes shape, the strain is beginning to get to James. Mama told me I could be a spaceman. Look at his hair. Oh, man. We need a photograph of you. You could be like on the street corner, man. <laughs> I told you, when I get into this, I get into this. Over the wall, Terry finally gets to weld. The launch rod has to be straight, otherwise the rocket won't go straight. Stay there. Yes, love the smell of hork welding in the morning. The Art Attacks also have a launch rod. Beetle is welding, and Flatmo is cutting the rocket's aluminum skin. Carefully supervised by June, of course, he can't afford to make any more mistakes. Want to give us a little good luck kiss before we all go? Last time we see it. The egg. All right, oh, come on, Bruce. <laughs> Kick some butt. All right. Hang in there, Egg. Long go. Brothers. Go. 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 <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, it's all fun and games until you realize you got one hour left. That's one hour. The art attacks are getting anxious. It's the final fitting for Flatmo's foil, and there isn't time to fail. Christmas tree. <laughs> we built a Christmas tree. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's all hands around you guys. Come on. No, 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 oh, no, no, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Stress does strange things to people. Seeing the monster he's created, Flatmo has a question. What I'm wondering about is the stability here, James. Does that need strengthening like a big ring? You think, you think so? Good? Well, I don't know. How about if we folded the inside edge and then take yeah, it? Yeah, just tucked it under. Yeah, we could do that. That would do It's that <laughs> a lot of work. That's man. a lot we of work, guys. We still got to put we this got, on We got to do the payload. You got to put this on that. Let's get the payload going. Okay. Let's get the payload yes. going. Yes. I want you to tell me, you know, when, when we're out there, they go to launch, what you think is going to happen with each team? Well, uh, you know, back over to the Long Brothers, um, you know, they really came through, and uh, they got themselves a missile. It's going to scream off the pad. There's okay. no doubt about it. All right. And it's going to be two seconds of pure acceleration. That's how right. I build myself in the dating circles. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's why you probably have a lot of fun. <laughs> how about uh, Art Attacks? You are going to see a lot more fire coming out of this rocket oh, than the Long yeah. Brothers. Which is cool. It's going to be real cool. Uh, there's going to be flames coming up underneath there. I'm very concerned that it may possibly burn the aluminum away, which uh, could act as a, a, a surface which could actually steer the rocket. Okay. And who do you think, as it stands right now, if they both work perfectly, could make it higher? Long Brothers. You think so? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Why? Because originally you said Art Attacks yeah. could make it higher on a perfect uh, world if they both built perfectly. But you know, you, you, well, you have to kind of understand that the point is what, what point that they're at, and I kind of stand back and look at what they're really doing. Right. And they've made some changes in the right direction. But I'll tell you what, right here now, I, I think, I really think tomorrow, if one of them comes back with a broken egg, that team has an omelet and they have to eat it. What do you think? I like that. Is that lining up anywhere in particular? Do you mark it or what's the The longs are on to final checks. Maybe it's an optical illusion again. But no, there's no way that's right. They're worried that the rocket isn't sitting straight on the launch rod. I'm seeing five and a half. Put me on five and a half. Yeah. Whoa, check out the moon behind it. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. Man. We're going there. Hey, we're going there, man. That's, what, that's where we're sending this rocket tomorrow. To the moon. All right, come on. Let's pick it up, guys. Wow. Going to the moon. Bruce, you're kind of huffing. Huffing. It's been, yeah. been a long day. It's been a long day. Black. Yeah. Kind of makes it sassy. What, now, what are you doing with the duct tape? You're just sealing up the one gap? Yeah. Deflect the sun rays so it doesn't melt whenever it gets up there. Is that <laughs> what it is? So are you going to call this Icarus? <laughs> <laughs> parachute's going to open? Absolutely. Not a question. We added an extra line to it, so it's going to be a stable parachute now. All right. Feel much better about it. Is our egg coming back down? One oh, piece. it's definitely coming down. Yeah. <laughs> In one piece. That's not a yeah. question. Not, that was the one thing we were guaranteed that it would come down. We're not looking for an omelet, though, Greg. Oh, no. <laughs> the pantyhose is going to save the day. Yeah. Right. I really think the pantyhose is the big savior. Well, you seem proud of your own creation, and uh, and you came up with some ingenious oh. ways to build it. And, These uh, guys were great. They came up with this, this structure with the aluminum. Because I was going to use steel rods. They came up with the structure, and it's so light, it makes it the winning rocket.
All right. Well, the, the you're Wrong right, Brothers. Because you guys know this is this is it. <laughs> this is it. This is the enchilada we're betting on. That's here. right. This is the final. That's right. All right. Well, I'm excited. I think it's great. Congratulations, guys. Right, thanks. Right. Thank you. Thanks. The true test happens. is tomorrow. That's yep. right. All right, gentlemen. We're ready. We're ready. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. Let's finish this up. All right. We want to make this black from here down. Over at Art Attacks, Flatmo has whipped out his paint and is about to transform the cone into a teepee of wonder. So how does it feel seeing this beautiful it's creation? It's incredible. And it's an incredible team. They, they did a, a marvelous job with a crazy idea. <laughs> <laughs> that just about says it for the Art Attacks, yeah. I think. And it's just a marvelous job. And uh, I think we're going to be very yeah. successful. Any and you're definitely not worried about the overheating problem. That's not an issue. No. You mean as far as uh, uh, melt? Just about the heat being kind of sucked up into the vacuum inside your rocket and burning through your aluminium flimsy stuff. I mean, it's not exactly substantial, is it? It's only, it's only, three, it's only about three and a half seconds. <laughs> it could probably last that long. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's two, feet, two feet away. Do you still reckon 2,500 feet? That's going to go a little lower. A little lower? It's How getting, much lower? Uh, maybe, maybe about uh, 900 feet lower. Right. Yeah. What, why, what's happened to change uh, the weight? The, the weight. Right. But still, the trick to this game is getting the egg back. You said it. If you, it doesn't matter how high you go, if the egg breaks. Unless both eggs break, in yeah. which case it does matter how high you go. Uh, but you can't reckon on theirs breaking. No. That's too risky. No, it is too risky. I just got to make sure that ours doesn't. Attention astronauts, time is almost gone! You only have one half of an hour to put your capsule on. Half an hour left to build, kids! Easy does it. Eggs in there. Yeah. Star. <laughs> Amazingly, the Long Brothers are cleaning up. They train them well down on the farm. You have to let go. Woo! I've never, ever, ever seen a build area look like this at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, really does make it. We have to buy the 25 cents for the next 10 hours. It's time, teams! That's all she wrote, baby! Put it down, flat move! That's, That's it! it. The building is done! Tomorrow will be extra special because we're racing for the championship of Hush and Wars! <laughs> <laughs> So will the huge motor in the Art Attack's upside down aluminium teepee cause it to burn up like a volcano and drop fire from the sky? Or will the three motors in the Long Brothers styrofoam duct tape missile refuse to light at the same time and cause it to turn straight into the ground? And will either team get their egg back safely? Join us after the break. Howdy there, gang. Welcome back to the Junkyard Wars Finals. Well, we are here now at a top secret military base so that we can finally test our team's rockets. It is going to be a blast. Critical steps for today. We're going to start our prep checklist, which is put the egg, egg. in. We'll put the egg safe and sound inside of a bag. Before the teams launch their ostrich eggs into space, they have one hour for final preparations. Whilst the art attacks are making cuts in their giant teepee, the Long Brothers are checking their parachute. The teams will launch their rockets one at a time and then run out to retrieve them. Whoever's egg makes it safely back to Earth will be the winner. In the event of both eggs landing intact or both eggs getting scrambled, the team whose rocket gets the highest will be this year's Junkyard Wars champions. So, Mission Control. Hello. Yes. Hello. How are you? Is it loaded? Uh, somewhat. <laughs> so, the egg's in there. The egg is in there. And, uh, 
You can actually see all of its cushioning. It's actually right in here. You're the you egg meister. Grass in here. The egg meister. We put grass in there and the down in here in the bottom yes. of the tube. It's all <laughs> natural grass from the Salisbury Plains. <laughs> yes. <laughs> got styrofoam with a concave so the egg fits in. Yeah, the in egg it. cup. The egg is inside of a bag in case it breaks so it won't get all over the equipment inside. <laughs> We've got a foam rubber ring around the egg for outer stability. Yeah. We've got the another part of the bag stuck on top of that. This could actually come down without a parachute. <laughs> And I think it would still survive. Don't try I it. No, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, don't try no, it at home, not. no. <laughs> so these wires here are the ones that are going to deploy the charge to pop the nose cone off? Yes. What's going to happen is, is the Altec, this yep. is the little electronic computer that uh, calculates how fast it's accelerating. It does calculations on that acceleration and figures out, you know, how, what its velocity is. And uh -huh. when it reaches zero velocity, you actually are at the peak altitude. At that point, it will fire the main ejection charge. That's what worries me. I've, I had a dream actually in the hotel last night. Oh, no. And I was sitting in a chair in a corner with a dunce hat on. <laughs> <laughs> and I floated above the chair and it exploded. It was a weird <laughs> dream. I don't know if it has anything to do with what's going to happen today. But did but the dunce hat pop off? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think we could call that ominous. Talk us through what you think is going to happen from the, from the moment of the turn of the key. Well, the turn of the key, well, we have to fire the three igniters. The three rocket motors will come to life in about three quarters of a second. Right. Together. And we'll, so we'll know instantly whether they have all gone off together. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because of the tears flooding out of all of your eyes. But if you see the expert running away to hide, then we know all the motors didn't light. And yeah. looking at the old uh, painted teepee over there, what do you reckon to your chances? Well, this rocket should go higher because the coefficient of drag is determined on the diameter of the rocket. And you can see... You see, you're still thinking that Junkyard Wars is based on science. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my calculations? <laughs> they just have a bigger engine. That's all I know. <laughs> well, good luck with it. Join it up. Let's get going. All right. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Good luck. The countdown is minutes away. Rocket launches are notoriously unpredictable, and the safety of our teams is paramount, which is why the launch pad is a safe 100 yards away from the firing area. Time for a final inspection from our judge. All right, Kyle, let's check them out. Oh, here we go. It's a fancy painting. This is the uh, this is the killer teepee. Oh uh, no, uh, I would say it's the uh, flying teepee of death. How's that All sound, right, huh? That's good. It's a little more exciting. It's got a nice ring to it, the flaming snow cone. So uh, <laughs> what have you seen uh, now that it's all together? Any, any particular? Oh, room? they've made some changes. Look down here, we have these little ducts down here, these little ports. Uh -huh. uh, that's going to allow the air uh, to come down here, pull inside of here now and actually pull some of that flame away from the loon, which I was very, very concerned about. Okay. But we have another big problem that's coming up and that's the wind. The winds right now, I'd say are 15 to 20 knots at least. And what is that? What do you think that does? Well, look at all the area we have right here. That's um, you know, it's a it's a bad deal with a, this type of design. We may have to pick this up from New Jersey or something. Could be, <sighs> could be exciting. Could be a long haul. Okay, well, uh, let's let's go check out the other one. Okay, that's beautiful. Go. All right. The Long Brothers wound up with a a pleasantly a long rocket. <laughs> the Long Brothers, long rocket. You know, I tell you what, I, 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 I just ran into, you know, this is the first time I've really gotten close to that, and I've got mixed emotion about these fins. Really? Now, why is that? Flutter. Fluttering fins. There's really? So if one comes fins. off, all of a sudden it changes direction. There we go. You, you're wondering about the fins. Now, of course, these are their, their engines that they got. Yeah, and we got three of them, and we got to get all three to light instantly. They which don't light. Your, which was your big hang up from the start? Yeah, from the, from the start. Last time, you could take the chips off the craps table right now and change them if you wanted to. The long brothers, here it is. Here's the winner. All right. Okay. Well, I won't. T I won't tell the Art Attacks team you said that. That way, you know, if they win, you don't have to eat that. Wait much a crow. second. Now wait. You know, <laughs> but here we go back to the egg. You know, the egg is a big part of this deal. That's you know, right. you got uh, the Art Attack. I'll tell you what. If that goes 50 feet off the ground, takes an arc, blows off the nose cone, and the parachute comes down with the egg, and the egg is not cracked. Guess what? I win and you lose. Yeah, okay. you got it. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, man. The final countdown is nigh. First up will be the Long Brothers. Everything depends on their motors firing together, so they need to check their ignition system. It's just a turn of a key. Okay, are you ready? Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, it's gonna work. Their rocket is almost ready to go. 
our safety officer makes the final connections. Heart Attacks and Long Brothers, the moment is finally here. This will determine the championship of Junkyard Wars. You go, you, uh, you both have built some amazing machines to make it this far, yet today there will be only one winner. Long Brothers, you're first up. The sky is clear. The range is clear. And on the count of five, four, three, two, one, fire! <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it came out. Keep an eye on the booster. Hey, it's coming down pretty fast. Yep, there's the, uh, <laughs> oh baby. Oh, that's their, no, that's their rocket. That's their egg. Oh, they got their egg, great. Woohoo! There's the egg. Oh. Beautiful, and it's, it's coming down like oh, a parachutist. Yeah, we got it. Hey, their shoot worked, I'll tell you. There's going to be no scramble leg there. What if it did eject? Is no, it, it landed? No. There we go. Um, OK, we're down. down. It looks. No, it's not down yet. Oh, no. We're in the green. There it is. All right. <laughs> the egg has landed. <laughs> their egg may have landed, but it didn't reach a great height. We'll have to see. We'll find out. <laughs> the art attacks think they can do better. Right. Do you have any idea how high that was? I'm going to say that that was over a thousand feet when it came off. So we still have a shot. Boy, that thing took off. The, all three motors lit. Yeah. That was it. Yeah, it did. They got them going. It, it went up and it looked like it went up twice as high, yet it, the ejection charge blew when it still, still was you going up. Why? It separated. When the motor shut off, the G-forces changed and that uh, payload came out. That's what happened. Really? That's exactly what happened. Oh no. Was that not supposed to happen? Well, they were supposed to hang and get close. You know this. Because they up. could have gained another oh. 1,000 feet, 1,500, who knows. Now they got the egg back, but we have to see if it's cracked. Yeah, we better be if checking on if that. If it's cracked, no good. The Art Attacks now move their rocket to the launch pad. It requires all the team to pull together. And of course, a final prayer to the rocket gods. And with the power of Glenn Ray, <laughs> it soared to the heavens. All right, Art Attacks, you're up. The sky is clear. The range is clear. And on the count of five, four, three, two, one, fire! We don't have continuity. Burn the thro burn throw. Uh, fire. How about a warm glow? <laughs> <laughs> Got a match? Hey, we might have a lighter you can use. Oh, yeah. Okay, what do you think happened? Well, uh, we have a thing that's called chuff, and it didn't do that. The igniter didn't light. There was no smoke coming from the bottom, so the igniter didn't light, so it's an electrical problem. I don't think they test igniters like we did. See, ours is totally critical to have all three go. Our safety officer must have fitted a faulty igniter, so the art attacks get one more chance. Pad is hot. Ready? We're hot. Ready? Pad's hot. Well, that was more than likely Flatbow's fault. Let's try that again. Ready? Go. The prayer clearly didn't work, but maybe a bizarre little dance will do the trick. OK, we're ready. And on the count of five, four, three, two, one, fire! Yes! Ah, there goes the nose cone! Oh, 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 spin, oh. spin killed us. Come on, shoot open. Ah. Open! Ah. Ah. Houston, we have, we have a, problem. a problem. Not good. Not good. <laughs> this is rocketry, guys. It's exciting stuff. <laughs> that, that was like an ice skating hippo. It wasn't pretty. Oh, it, <laughs> it, it was fun to watch, but it wasn't pretty. No, it, it got off really nice. It did beautiful very well flame to start under with. it. Mm -hmm. But you noticed, all of a sudden, when that momentum started uh, stopping, the nose came off of that thing. The so, same thing. So I really, think, neither one of the teams had their noses down uh, tight it, enough. It, you know, 
Sometimes you eat the bear and, the, and sometimes the bear eats you. Why are you giving up so easy? <laughs> <laughs> that egg may still be intact. Do you think that's seriously The shoot did deploy. But it deployed about this high off the ground. That's right, but it did deploy. If their egg is in one piece, the art attacks could still be the winners. There's a bit of cone. If the Long Brothers has been scrambled. Uh, the altimeter on it. Yep, it ripped off. Drop this in. Ooh, ooh. Doesn't oh, look good. No. We got moisture. No, that's no. oil. That's oil. There it is. Hey. One piece. Easy does it. All right. yeah. <laughs> Kiss the egg. We did it. <laughs> Kathy to George. Yeah, go ahead, Kathy. I'm with the Long Brothers, and we are with one complete egg. Yeah. Woo! All right. <laughs> <laughs> there are two very happy Long Brothers here, and now we're going to go in search of the art attacks possible scramble. All right. Congratulations, Long Brothers. Let's find ostrich eggs. Will the art attacks find their egg in one piece? <laughs> find out after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to the finals of Junkyard Wars, where our rockets have been reaching for the sky. Uh, the art attacks giant TP crashed to Earth. But will their egg yeah. be broken? Well, the top looks like it's okay. Mm. Look at that. It's it's all good. Good. It looks like it. Wow. <gasps> Great pack It did job. deploy. The, yeah. um, the, uh, it did fire. You can see that it's black in here from the charge. Yeah, yeah it did, sure did. It did fire, so. And the parachute's all out. I mean, it looks yeah. like it did work properly. Yeah. <laughs> I think it had a slight impact. I think it came a little tough there. I think that since our egg is in here, is bulkhead. that yellow stain? No, that's grass stain. That's grass stain. But there's no oozing. Well, there's only one way to find out real quickly. Yeah. I can tell without taking it apart. It is not intact. <laughs> Let me stick my finger in. It's squishy. The inside the bag is squishy. <laughs> It's a slight moisture. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely, I can feel the shell. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, you can feel pieces of the shell inside. Stick your finger down and you can feel chunks of the shell. The chicken hatched. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. So the Long Brothers rocket has propelled the farmer's boys to the dizziest heights and guaranteed them a place in junkyard heaven. Wow. <laughs> yes. The art attacks can only look forward to a giant omelet. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> That's a mess. Yeah. Anybody want some scrambled eggs? <laughs> On the house. It is now the proud moment to proclaim the champion of Junkyard Wars. First, the runners up. Almost there. Made it all the way home. Down to one more. Art attacks over here. Woo! <laughs> Jude, come on up! Beetle, come on up! Oh my god, I jumped in! Was there anybody else? I got flat now, come on up! And now the most important moment! They made it all the way through from the first skirmish to the last battle. They won the war. It's the Long Brothers! Woo! The champions of Junk Edwards! Come on up, Bruce! <laughs> Terry! Ah! Hey! Greg! Come on up! Dunk me! <laughs> Amazingly heavy Junkyard Wars trophy! Yeah!